Hi, welcome to Mainly Math Excursions. I'm Fred Schumann. I'll be your tour guide. Today's mega fave number, 226,153,980. That is a special number. Let's find out why. Okay, let's start with some definitions. In math, we have some names, some letters, for important sets of numbers. R denotes the real numbers. Q for quotient denotes the rational numbers. N denotes the natural numbers. And sometimes that includes zero, sometimes it doesn't. I'm excluding zero. Zero is not in my natural number set. We can also define Q slash, which is the set complement of Q. That is, it's the irrational numbers because it's the real numbers with all the rational numbers removed. Now it's long been known that square root of two belongs to Q slash. That is, it's an irrational number because there are no natural numbers, A and B, for which b squared is equal to 2a squared. That is, no square can be twice another. Again, excluding zero. Another way to write that, another way to say that, is that for all natural numbers a and b, the square of b is never twice the square of a. Next, let's define c to be the set of non-square positive integers. So we take all the positive integers and we remove all the squares. Well, why are we doing this? We'll see in a minute. Um, okay, so this set runs 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. It just skips across all the squares. And for this, it turns out that every member of this set, you'll note 2 is the first member of this set, and we know that the square root of 2 is irrational. The square root of any number in this set is irrational because, similarly to the case for 2, no square can be n times another square if n is in this set. That can be proven similarly to the way Euclid proved square root of 2 irrational. It's a little more complicated, but not terribly. But it's not something I'm covering here today. Okay, we can't get b squared equal to n a squared. b squared equal n a equal 2 a squared. You can replace the 2 with n, and it still can't be done with natural numbers a and b. Well, if we can't get an equality, inequality, how close to equality can we get? Can it be off by 1? All right, for the minus sign on there, yes, sometimes you can get solutions. Some n's will, infinitely many n's, in fact, will have solutions of that form. n a squared minus 1 can be a square. Infinitely many other n's, it cannot be a square. If you take the plus sign out of here, if you take the plus sign for this, you can always get a solution. Now, this uh, historically is known as Pell's equation, and it's this, b squared equals n a squared plus 1. It was not, however, due to Pell himself. John Pell was a mathematician. He wrote about William Brunker's solution of this equation, and Leonard Euler, whom you may have heard of, one of the most brilliant mathematicians of all time, was reading this work by Pell, and at some point he remarked on this, he referred back to this work, and he cited this equation as belonging to Pell. When Pell only was talking about how somebody else had solved it. But because Euler mentioned that, we call this Pell's equation, because Euler called it that, and we're stuck with it. Anyway, historically, Many others had already worked on this problem. 
in India, Brahmagupta had done a lot of work on this. And uh, in Greece, Pythagoras had worked on it. Archimedes appears to have had a solution, or several solutions. We don't know if he had a solution method generally. Uh, we know that he had some familiarity and facility with it, but we haven't any evidence, uh, solid evidence, that he had a solution. Just a lot of circumstantial, very strong circumstantial evidence. Okay, now we have this equation. We want to know how to solve it. Well, in integers, such problems are known as Diophantine problems after Diophantus, who posed the idea of solving an algebraic equation in integers. This one has a general algorithm given an n that's in that non-square positive integer set. You can always find a solution and there's a general algorithm that will always find it. It's kind of complicated, uh, not overly so, but it's uh, not going to be covered in this video. I might make a later video about that. Anyway, what I have run into several decades ago, I've been working off and on on this problem, studying it off and on for several decades. Long ago, I found a simpler non-general algorithm. It'll work for some ends and not work for others. I call it the square remainder method. So how do we do that? Given n, find the nearest square, m squared, and doesn't matter if it's above or below n, just that it's the nearest square to n. Then write n as m squared plus l, where l is the square remainder, thus the name of the method. And l can be positive or negative, because m squared can be above or below n. But l will be between minus m and plus m. And again, it can be of either sign, can't be zero. Now, this method works, square root, I'm sorry, square remainder method works if and only if l divides 2m. Because in that case, alpha can be taken, defined as 2m over l, which we know is an integer because l divides 2m. Beta can be written as m alpha plus 1. Again, that's an integer. And in terms of m and l, it looks like this. Then the solution a and b that we get from this method is just the absolute values of alpha and beta. Now, we can check that, and here's the algebra that shows that it's true. You can check that for yourself if you like. Pause the video, check it out, and you'll find, I'm sure, that it is correct. Now, this solution that we find this way, when we can, is always the primitive fundamental solution, except when that square remainder is minus one, that is when n is one less than a square, m squared minus one. And in that case, this method gives the second solution. But then the fundamental solution is just very simple. It's a equal one, b equal m, which you can check out for yourself. And I think you'll find right away that that works when n is m squared minus one. Now the fundamental solution is the smallest one for n, and it turns out that the solution we got from this one can be generated from that in one iteration to give the second solution as the one that the square remainder method will give. Okay, that's a little bit about a method and uh, mention of there being a general method of solu solution. So, here's Pell's equation. Here are some solutions, a and b. You'll note that when n is a square, there is no solution. When it's a non-square positive integer, there are solutions. And uh, the, the square remainder method will pick up those solutions all the way up to 12. 13, it fails. And the solution becomes larger, significantly larger. Then it goes back and it's quiet again, and there's some other bumps 
and it goes, rattles around between one, two, three, and four digit answers for A until we get here to 61. When N is 61, the smallest solution is 226,153,980 for A. For B, it's 1,766,319,049. That could be a gigafave number if we had such things, but right now we're working on megafave numbers. And it's A that unlocks the key, the key that unlocks this solution for N equals 61. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have anything to say, there are comments you can enter below. And I thank Brady for the paper that I stole from his office over here. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.